in school, I actually had a bunch of friends of mine. We were really interested in making musical instruments. And one of the instruments that we were really interested in was this old synthesizer called the TB-303. And it was designed by Roland, which is a company in the US and Japan. And they actually discontinued the synth in the 80s. So we made our own copy of the synthesizer's clone. And we could do that because any patents and copyrights, they, they weren't valid for this old 80s technology You know, at the time. It was 20 years later. But it was a shame that anyone who wanted to build the synth afterwards would have to redo all the work. Let's do something kind of crazy. Let's just give it away. Put up all the files necessary to rebuild the synthesizer from scratch on our website. So that's kind of how the company started, by taking a technology that everybody wanted um, and making it basically available to anyone, while at the same time giving it away. So the cool thing about open source hardware is it separates the design, the intellectual property, from manufacturing. So open license agreement means that when I create intellectual property, say copyright or patent, or just a design, um, and it covers all sorts of stuff, not just electronics, but also like CAD files for mechanics, hardware, um, you know, designs for a pump, anything. I put those up online and I put them up under a, a file format that's well understood. All engineers share files together in the same format. And I say, you can use these and I release any copyright that I would have had on this firmware. And the only thing I request is that you don't remove the attributions. There's a lot of tools that people use in construction and farming. And there are tools that you can buy from John Deere, International Harvester, or um, Caterpillar. They thought there's a lot of these tools that maybe we can design. Maybe they're not as nice as these beautiful yellow machines, but they're good enough and you can make them by just welding mild steel, taking basic engines, uh, wiring, and, and um, lead acid battery, stuff that's available all over the world, and to create these tools that are modular and simple. And so some people would say, well, wait a minute, you know, these tools are so basic, they're not going to be able to replace um, a threshing machine. And what I really like to point people towards is thinking, this isn't a replacement. Because there already is the John Deere and Caterpillars of the world, and, and they have figured out how to manufacture a machine that's used by millions of people. But oftentimes when people go into um, developing countries, there's specialized needs that aren't being met by these big companies. But if you have something like the Global Village Construction Set, people can take these basic tools and adapt them for their own needs. You know, for example, when a project that maybe a company abandons, they say, it turns out that this technology we designed didn't make it in uh, maybe a first world market. Um, we're going to try to pressure them to, instead of just abandoning it or killing it off, to open source it. I mean, say, like, hey, you know, we ne didn't necessarily know how to take this technology and provide it to our customers, but maybe somebody else will. And one of the nice things that is happening at the same time as open source hardware is all the sensors, the technologies, cell phones, GPS, accelerometers, all the stuff, the price is dropping and dropping. At the same time as the manufacturing capability of the world is increasing. So again, more competitive, better for everybody because prices go down while the quality goes up.